Episode 81, Getting Ready for the Game. Pearl and Lana arrived at the VIP lounge downstairs to find a massive table set up. Danny was reclining in one of the chairs, the sleeves of his crisp white shirt rolled up. He was seated next to Victor Madden and a few other company executives. The men were caught in a lively conversation, except for Danny, who kept silent and only nodded his head from time to time. So, the big boss himself had decided to make an appearance for the game. Clarice, Rosalind, and Sally were present, but Sylvia was nowhere to be seen. It wasn't all that surprising because she preferred to keep a low profile and rarely socialized. Please, everyone grab a seat, Madden called out. Pearl noticed that the chair to Danny's right was empty. Sally sat down, sure of herself and eager to see what drama would unfold. Pearl had the feeling that the men were sizing up her and Clarice. She grabbed Lana's hand and dragged her to some seats opposite Danny. Miss Layton, perhaps you'd like to sit next to Mr. Simon. Clarice smiled and replied, Thank you, but I feel that we girls should stick together. She signaled to Rosalind, and they sat down next to Sally. Madden looked at Danny and said, It seems everyone's here. Shall we begin, Mr. Simon? Wait, there's someone else coming. Danny responded. The moment he finished speaking, the door of the room opened, and the tall figure of James Wright appeared. He was definitely not dressed for the occasion, sporting a rather casual dark overcoat. His handsome face was expressionless until his eyes landed on Lana. At the sight of her, his eyes turned cold, although he smiled faintly. Then he walked over to Danny and sat in the empty chair next to him. Rosalind's eyes had lit up when James appeared in the doorway. I say, Miss Wright, it's been three years since you and your husband were in one place together, someone quipped. Will you be picking up where you left off, or has Mr. Wright moved on from you? Lana looked at James and smiled. I'm sure he has made the most of my absence. He has never lacked for female attention. It wouldn't have been hard for him to find someone or many someones to keep his bed warm. Would that make you jealous, Lana? Let's hear from you, James. Have there been any extramarital affairs? James looked at Lana and chuckled to himself. Would she be jealous? Episode 82. Call me Danny. Would Lana be jealous? It was more likely she would rather he had affairs with a dozen women, so she could easily get rid of him when divorce proceedings began. James smiled and said, Come on, guys. Would you fool around if you had a wife like Lana? No one is that stupid. Lana's only response was a cold smile. Enough of the banter, ladies and gentlemen. Let the game begin. The rules are as follows. Each of you will draw cards, and then we'll add up your points. The person with the highest score after three draws can dare the person with the lowest score to do something. In the first round, Rosalind ended up with the highest score, and Danny with the lowest. I dare you to kiss Clarice, Rosalind chirped. Pearl quickly glanced at him. Will he dare? Danny's face was expressionless as he looked at Clarice. Clarice, however, was visibly excited, her cheeks aglow and her eyes sparkling with hope and expectation. Danny got up and walked with purpose towards Clarice. When he reached her chair, he bent down and moved closer to her cheek. His scent enveloped her, quickening her pulse. Danny brushed back her hair and kissed her. Amid the whistles and applause that followed, Rosalind glanced at Pearl and Lana with a smug smile. What a stunning pair they make, right? No wonder everyone is eagerly waiting for the wedding bells, she cooed. Damn right, that would definitely be one match made in heaven, someone replied. Rosalind was beaming now, but a few seconds later her smile evaporated, and she stiffened when she saw Danny fixing her with a hard stare. Pearl's face showed no emotion, but her hands had quickly turned cold. It was clear Rosalind's words were intended to quash any hopes Pearl may be foolishly harboring. She felt Lana's warm hand on hers and looked at her friend with a reassuring smile. Don't worry, I'm fine. James stared at Lana, wondering yet again why she was so kind to others, but glacially cold with him. 
How come she cared so much about Pearl, but didn't seem to give a rat's ass about her husband? When the second round finished, Danny had the highest score and Pearl the lowest. Miss Brown, I want you to address me as Danny, he declared. Address him as what now? Everyone at the table seemed just about ready to faint. Pearl was no less shocked, but she managed to reply calmly, Mr. Simon, I hardly know you, and it would be highly inappropriate given the circumstances. It would be best to change your dare. Danny raised an eyebrow and said, Well then, how about you come over here and pour me a drink? Episode 83, A Tense Moment Slightly apprehensive, Pearl stood up and approached Danny's chair. She picked up the bottle of wine before him and refilled his glass, then handed it to him. Here you are, Mr. Simon. Rather than take the glass and drink, Danny covered her fingers with his own and held on. It was as if electricity had run through her fingers. Her hand grew numb while her face turned a flaming red. There was no mistaking the deliberateness of his action. Everyone's eyes were fixed on the two of them, the air almost vibrating from the tension. After what seemed like an eternity, he took the glass from her hand and said with a smile, Cheers, Miss Brown. It was finally over. Hugely relieved, Pearl returned to her seat in a hurry. She had hardly managed to regain her composure when two strong hands landed on her shoulders and held her firmly in place. Turning her head, she saw Danny behind her. Mr. Simon, what? She was unable to continue because his fingers dug into her flesh, causing her to wince. He bent down and whispered hoarsely in her ear. Miss Brown, next time I ask you to do something, make sure you comply, especially when there's an audience. Hey, what are you two whispering about? Let's all hear it, someone shouted. Pearl sat frozen for a second then anger and indignation filled her. Before she could say something, however, Danny smiled and said, Oh, I was just sharing some wine tips with Miss Brown. Pearl truly hated the man at that moment. Despicable beast. She broke free and stood up, a forced smile playing on her lips. Indeed, Mr. Simon knows his wines. She grabbed her bag and headed to the ladies' room. Danny's eyes followed her for a few seconds, then he went after her. The men at the table exchanged glances in silence, suddenly becoming aware that Pearl Brown was someone special to Danny Simon. Episode 84, Pick One It was only natural that everyone would cast discreet glances at Clarice and Rosalind, wondering how Danny's behavior affected them. Victor Madding clapped his hands and said, Come on, come on, let's keep playing. As the game resumed, Rosalind leaned over and whispered to Clarice through clenched teeth. Danny is giving us a hard time. That bitch Pearl seems to have played her cards well. How dare that little upstart poke her nose where it doesn't belong. Everyone knows he's yours. Squirming under the looks cast in her direction, Clarice struggled to remain calm in the face of this humiliation. She wasn't used to getting pitiful glances. She was the one who usually threw them. It stung even more because Danny hadn't really kissed her, although it appeared so to the others. His lips never made contact with her skin. However, there was nothing fake about his chase after Pearl. What made her different from all the women who had thrown themselves at Danny over the years? In the new round, Lana collected the highest number of points while James had the lowest. Rosalind grew anxious, balling her hands into fists. She stared at James with barely concealed longing. Clarice spent the first ten years of her life in the Lint House. She, Rosalind, and James grew up together, friends for as long as they could remember. Later on, Rosalind fell in love with James, but he was taken with Clarice. For a long time, she had no hope of winning over the man of her dreams. Luckily for her, Clarice ended up in love with Danny and completely forgot about James, finally clearing the way for Rosalind to make her move. Her hopes were dashed yet again when James unexpectedly tied the knot with Lana Travis, a nobody by any high society measure. 
His choice had shocked everyone, prompting his parents to try all sorts of desperate measures to change his mind. However, James was adamant he would marry Lana or no one. Lana found James charming and kind, but she wouldn't have married him if she hadn't been desperate. Her ailing mother required expensive medical care, and Lana could never earn that kind of money. So she finally said yes. While initially crushed, Rosalind found herself hoping again when the gossip columns erupted with the news of the couple's tumultuous honeymoon and swift separation. How could she not hate Lana for dumping James in such a fashion and humiliating him so publicly? She could not for the life of her understand why he'd chosen Lana, and it seemed no one in New York had any inkling either. Lana looked at James, who was seated opposite her, and said calmly, Clarissa Rosalind, pick one, and Frencher. Episode 85, A Twist in the Game. Loud gasps were heard all around the table when Lana said her piece. Meanwhile, she sat there as cool as a cucumber, an enigmatic smile playing on her lips. James was a laid-back person, rarely allowing people and events to bend him out of shape. In fact, his imperturbable nature had led some to mistakenly conclude that he was cold-blooded, a robot with no emotions. The only person who could really get under his skin was Lana, her mere presence somehow being enough to throw him off balance. Right now, she was making his blood boil. He wanted to choke the life out of her. Rosalind felt her heart leap in her throat. She looked at James with expectation, barely able to hide the hope in her eyes. Lana noticed Rosalind's reaction and instantly felt goosebumps crawling all over her body, revolted by the pathetic infatuation of the woman. James stood up and walked towards Rosalind, whose heart was ready to burst. However, he bypassed her and headed to Clarice. Clarice watched his approach with mixed feelings. James was a wonderful man and always treated her well. Had Danny not entered the picture, she probably would have ended up with James. James, you... Clarice started, but shut up in surprise as he kept walking by her and stopped next to Lana. He ran his fingers through his wife's silky black hair, bent down, and kissed her on the lips. Lana took a couple of seconds to get over the shock and then pushed him away and said irritably, That wasn't your dare. Ignoring her words, James pulled her up and pressed her slender body against his muscular frame. Then he lifted her chin and looked into her eyes, saying emphatically, I couldn't care less about this stupid game. The only woman I want of French is you. Lana fixed him with an icy stare. Studying her face, James realized she was even more beautiful than three years ago. She smelled of orchids, and he thought he'd never get enough of her scent. Lana noticed his eyes darkening with desire and pushed him away with a frown. With a final heated look at her, James turned around and went back to his seat. Okay, everyone, the dare portion of the game is over. Now comes the truth portion. As before, you'll draw cards, and the person with the highest score can ask the one with the lowest score any question. Let's start. The atmosphere heated up again. Lana was cursing under her breath, thinking that James' stupid kiss had turned her luck. She ended up with the lowest score in three consecutive rounds. Episode 86, A Restroom Clash. The next few minutes were rather unpleasant for Lana. As could be expected, people were gagging to learn about that fabled honeymoon, which had long been the favorite topic of New York's gossip mongers. She tried to reveal as little as possible, but she couldn't help feeling a bit of malicious satisfaction while watching Rosalind squirm in her seat. James, however, displayed no emotions, leaning back in his chair with no expression on his face. When she finished answering the question, Lana stood up. You guys carry on. I'm so tired, so I'll head back first, she said, and left the table. James watched her as she walked away his eyes roaming hungrily over the alluring curves accentuated by her white dress. A few seconds later, he stood up abruptly and also left. Seeing James follow Lana out of the room, Rosalind was just about ready to lose it. 
She turned to Clarice and whimpered. I don't understand. What does that bitch have that I don't? Why can't he get over her? Angry tears filled Rosalind's eyes, threatening to spill over. Clarice held her gently, murmuring words of comfort. She was feeling confused as well. James had been her friend since childhood, yet she had no idea who the man that just left was. It was weird looking at his familiar features, but seeing a stranger. Was it because of Lana? Sally was pleased to be a mere observer of this evening's excitement. Smiling wickedly, she browsed through the photo album on her cell phone. She had secretly taken some photographs of Danny and Pearl's intimate moment and sent them to Max. She wanted her sister to end up with nothing. Pearl wasn't going to get Danny, and Max would also abandon her. Lana was walking down the corridor when someone suddenly grabbed her by the wrist and pushed her through a door into what turned out to be the men's room. She quickly pulled herself together and looked up to see James standing in front of her. What the hell is wrong with you? she yelled. You can't have a we without company or what? James was anything but calm now, his face going dark and his eyes blazing. However, her choice of words amused him. Have a we? Seriously, did you pick that up during your studies abroad? I guess you spent some time in Britain, eh? Episode 87. Is that your idea of flirting? Lana shot back sarcastically. Oh, I suppose that's not what the high and mighty Clarice would do in reference to this bodily function. Don't drag Clarice into this, James bristled. Let's talk about how you resurface after three years, and the first thing you do is serve me with divorce papers, not even in person, mind you. He wouldn't have even seen her if it wasn't for Danny's call, informing him of her whereabouts. He had rushed over right away, abandoning a conference call with some business partners. Lana snorted. This man was really... <sighs> Forget it. It was actually entertaining to see how he jumped to Clarice's defense at the drop of a hat. Our divorce is merely a legal formality, and I'm not even asking for alimony. So why do we need to see each other? Lana approached James and looked him right in the eye. So, if you have any pressing matter to raise before we part ways for good, now would be the time. If not, please sign the divorce agreement as soon as possible so we can finally put an end to this farce. Lana turned around to leave, the swift movement parting the high slit of her dress to reveal her entire leg. James reached out and caught her arm, pulling her to him and then pressing her body against the wall, his six-foot-two frame trapping her in place. With a menacing look in his eyes, he growled, Have you left the house without underwear on? Taken aback by his question, Lana stared at him incredulously. Have you completely lost it? And how is that any of your business? Answer me, James barked. She lost some of her bravado in the face of his fierce intensity and decided to take it down a notch. Jeez, there are these things called thongs, you know. I'm wearing one of those. Can I go now? I sincerely hope you're done flirting or whatever you call this. A vein was throbbing on James's temple, anger oozing from every pore of his skin. Damn the woman. He wasn't going to let her off so easily this time. She had dominated his thoughts for three years, the memories of their brief time together keeping him awake at night. Even when she looked at him with indifference or downright disdain, he found her more captivating than any woman he'd ever known. Flirting? Why would he need to flirt with her? She was his woman. Episode 88, The Cost of Divorce. James grabbed her chin, but Lana managed to swat his hand away. What are you trying to do here? She asked defiantly. He caught her hands and pinned them behind her back, saying calmly, I don't think anyone would find me at fault for wanting some attention from my wife. After all, we are married. You're not some random woman I've trapped in the john. Lana scoffed. Oh, please, get real. A few days together don't make us husband and wife. Plus, the fact that we're married doesn't give you the right to force yourself on me. Her words seemed to sober him up. 
As much as he burned with desire for her, he'd never take her against her will. Inhaling deeply, he stepped back and said coldly, Okay then, you want a divorce. You can have it after we settle the account. Account? Lana couldn't recall them having any account. I've been paying your mother's medical bills for the last three years, and my assistant has calculated all of the expenses. Your mother has been getting the best care money can buy and lives in a luxury senior home, which has cost me around a million dollars to date, factoring interest, service fees, and compensation for my inconvenience. I'd say double that amount would do the trick. So cough up $2 million and you can have your divorce. Lana's eyes widened in shock. Two million dollars? I'll have to rob a bank to get that kind of money. James shrugged. That's not my problem. You want a divorce? I want two million dollars. He was certain that she wouldn't be able to come up with that much money. Her father had abandoned her long ago, and James had not heard anything about her working. Lana took a deep breath, straightened her back, and smoothed her dress. Then she looked at him coldly and said in a calm voice, I'll pay you back. She turned around and left. His head was still swimming from her scent. James watched her graceful figure with hungry eyes. He couldn't care less about the money. Two million dollars was pocket change for him. It was just a hurdle he was placing before her. He would stop at nothing to prevent this divorce. Episode 89, Eavesdropping. James stayed behind in the men's room for a while, splashing his face with cold water and trying to regain his composure. Just as he entered a cubicle to pee, two men walked into the restroom. I wish Lana had been more forthcoming with her answers. Damn, that woman is a stunner. Can you imagine getting your hands on a piece like this? James is a lucky bastard, one of the men said. I'm not so sure, dude, the other one replied. Granted, she's magnificent, but how is he lucky? I mean, yeah, he married her, but they've only been together for a few days. I guess we'll never know what really happened on that honeymoon, but they are not really husband and wife. You know, people also keep wondering why James married her, the first man said. Rosalind has been lusting after him for ages, not to mention that most of New York socialites were dying to bag him. In fact, I've heard Lana wasn't particularly keen to marry him. Lana comes from a prominent family, but her father turned his back on her and her mother after he married his mistress. I guess all Lana has is beauty and brains. I read somewhere that she's a member of Mensa with a genius IQ. That's right, she skipped grades in school and could have her pick of prestigious universities at 15. She had two PhDs by the age of 18. When you think about it, it's kind of scary. Too much beauty and too much brains for one person to have. Well, James is no slouch in those departments either. I mean, he's very handsome and remarkably intelligent. Huh, I guess they are a good fit after all. Holding his breath, James listened to the conversation outside with a grim expression on his face. Pearl left the VIP lounge to get some air. She took a few steps before noticing a tall figure at the end of the corridor. Max was here. After that night, when he tried to get her to leave Danny's suite, Max had disappeared and left her alone. Seeing him now, Pearl felt sorry for him. His clothes were unkempt, his face covered in stubble, and his eyes bloodshot. He seemed to be wasted. He stood in front of her and rasped, Pearl, why are you demeaning yourself? What could possibly justify betraying your principles and ending up his mistress? His words stung her, but she managed to reply in an even voice. Last time I checked, Danny was not married. So what, you were hoping that some bedroom gymnastics would push Clarice out of his mind? Max pulled out his phone and showed her the photo Sally had sent him. Have you ever considered that he might be planning to enjoy the best of both worlds, presenting a respectable facade with Clarice during the day and getting jiggy with you at night? Is that the kind of life you want? Episode 90, Coming to Blows. 
Pearl looked at the photographs, most of them capturing the moments where Danny's fingers were covering hers. There was no doubt in her mind that Sally had taken the photos and sent them to Max. Look, Max, we are nothing but allies now. You don't have the right to stick your nose into my private affairs. Before she could leave, Max grabbed her arm and pinned her against the wall. His voice was tinged with desperation as he said, Open your eyes, Pearl. Danny will never see you as anything more than his plaything of the moment. You're never going to end up as a significant other. Please, come back to me. And we can make a fresh start. I'll never doubt you again. I love you, Pearl. Struggling to break free, she hissed, What is wrong with you? Let me go. His handsome face now distorted. Max buried his head in her neck and inhaled her fresh scent. He rasped angrily, Don't play coy with me, Pearl. You're no longer the innocent belle of the ball. We all know now what you've been getting up to with Danny behind closed doors. This crazed person before her was definitely not the kind, considerate Max she'd known for as long as she could remember. This was a stranger, with bloodshot eyes, a bitterly twisted mouth, and suspect intentions. As angry as Pearl was, she felt her heart break at the loss of her oldest friend. Get away from me, Max! I won't let you go! You will be mine! He started pulling up her dress with one hand and unbuckling her belt with the other. Pearl tried to push him away, but his body was pinning her firmly in place. She was just about to scream for help when she caught a glimpse of Danny's tall figure out of the corner of her eye. He stopped abruptly and stood there, eyeing her coldly with both hands in his pockets. Pearl froze for a moment before hurriedly stretching out her arms and wrapping them around Max's neck. She wasn't going to be Danny's little mistress. It would be for the best to end things before the situation escalated. Caught off guard by the sudden change in her behavior, Max paused for a second then hugged her tightly and murmured into her neck, God, I'm so happy you're giving me another chance. You won't regret it, I promise. Pearl felt Danny walking past them toward the elevator. He had left, just like that without a word to her or any attempt to interfere. Pearl's initial sense of relief was quickly drowned by a feeling of emptiness. Why, for crying out loud, she was supposed to end this relationship long ago. There was no future with him. Why then did it feel as if she suffered a tremendous loss? Was the ache in her heart a sign that she was in love with Danny? Her thoughts were interrupted by Max kissing her lips. Pearl immediately stiffened and prepared to kick him in the crotch. Before her knee could connect, Max groaned in pain, and his head flew to one side as a fist landed on his cheek. He stumbled backward and slid to the floor, Danny towering above him with a murderous expression on his face. Too shocked to move, Pearl watched with horror the events that unfolded. Max looked up at his attacker, and the moment the two men locked eyes, their hatred for each other spilled forth unrestrained. Max quickly leaped to his feet and in turn punched Danny in the face, splitting his lip. Danny licked the blood with a provocative sneer and jumped on Max. Within a second, the two of them were exchanging punches and kicks, their expressions fierce and relentless.